Are you a sub? Are you compact? Are you a sub compact? Well, then the 2024 Honda HRV is for you. Let's talk about her. Welcome back to the channel. Sub compact, what a lame joke. Welcome back to Sparkplug TV. My name is Chris and I do car reviews for literally everybody, not just car enthusiasts. First, before we start the video, I just wanna go ahead and thank our sponsor for today's video, Johnson Honda of Stewart. Link in the description below. In a segment full of turbocharged four cylinders, non-turbocharged four cylinders that get zero to 60 in like seven to eight seconds, you do have the entry-level subcompact Honda HRV. Now, I've always been intrigued by this thing because it does just kind of look like a sedan. It does have the unibody shape of an SUV, but it literally has the height of a Civic just about. I'm being a little hyperbolic, but you know what I mean. I mean, it just is like in the same category as like the Hyundai Ioniq, right? Where it's like kind of a hot hatch, but it's big enough that it could be an SUV. And that's exactly what this is. It does start around $25,000 and you can option it up to the EXL, which is this one, around $28,000. That is pretty freaking cheap for, especially for how much that you get with this car. It does also come either with an all wheel drive or a front wheel drive drivetrain. This one does come with the all wheel drive. Let's get into the powertrains. <laughs> Look at how big this engine bay is compared to how tiny this 2.0 liter inline four cylinder engine is. You could put like a humongous inline six in this. Could you imagine? Or like maybe even a V8? Probably Probably not the V8, but the inline six is definitely possible for this. I wanna buy this and put an inline six in it and see how much horsepower I can crank out of it. Because currently, this 2.0 liter naturally aspirated four cylinder engine only produces 158 horsepower, which is then tied to a CVT transmission. Now, zero to 60 is 9.4 seconds. That is um, lackadaisical to say the least. You're not buying this for the speed and the power and the oomph, but I think where the you know CX-30 has much more power and a much faster naturally aspirated engine as opposed to the turbo, I don't know. The European market also does get a hybrid powertrain, which does elicit a tiny bit more power, and the US market does not have that, which I did wish that, I do wish that it did have that, but, Maybe we'll get there eventually. Okay, so I have to say that the design language overall is a huge improvement from the previous generations. It's finally as modern as it could possibly get, especially with the LED daytime running lights and the front grill in general. I really love this color too, and I just love the fact that it has this gloss black fender paneling instead of the typical plastic fendering. Um, it is black and so it does go really well with this kind of teal color that it's got. It does also have these really nice 18 inch wheels which are the biggest uh, that they come with, the other ones being the 17 inch wheels. Now I do also like just the general shape of it as well and I don't know, I just I really like the way that it looks. Like. There's something about it that screams aggression, but also friendliness, and I think the friendliness comes from this adorable little grill. <laughs> and I think that this is one model that I think would be something that I would hate to see leave, but love to watch go. I just really think that these tail lamps look really premium. Yeah, I just really like the way that this whole thing looks. You know, especially with this like slanted kind of gloss black, everything looks slanted. It's just, it's really nice. So let's go over cargo capacity. Now, it does not have an automatic lift gate, but it is, uh, as you can see, I did just pop it and it pretty much just opened on its own. In terms of cargo capacity, with the seats up, you do have 24 cubic feet of storage. And then with the second row seats down, you do have 55 cubic feet. That's a lot bigger than the Mazda CX-30, so at least that has that going for it, as opposed to the Mazda. Let's go inside. Okay, tell me why these seats are more comfortable than the Pilots. Oh my God. God, is this comfortable in here. I feel like I'm sitting on like a couch or something. This is really impressive. Additionally, I feel like the fact that this has a nine inch infotainment system is what this car should have, right? Whereas the Pilot had the nine inch infotainment system and that deserves at least between a 12 and a 14 incher. This one, 
excuse me. This one does have the nine inch one as well. And it is, you know, really nice. It's got wireless CarPlay and Android Auto. It's got a wireless phone charging pad that I would hope works. It does have some USB-C power supply on each side. And I really like the way that this is designed on the interior. I love this center console. It's got some storage down here at the bottom, but it also does have you know, just this kind of nice leather trimmed. I mean, for $28,000, this is a lot of car. It does also have a dual zone climate control system as well as uh, Honda Safety Sense as well with the lane follow assist, the lane keep assist, um, as well as the blind spot monitoring systems and the emergency brake. Now the gauge cluster itself is partially digital and so it does have a analog speedometer, which I think is pretty cool. Now it does also have downhill assist um, for that off-road capable uh, all-wheel drive nature. Um, I would love to test that out fully on the Uari Forest, but we'll get there eventually. Now, it does also have the honeycomb design language that they have taken directly from the Civic. I mean, this is just a Civic on stilts. Um, and I think I would probably go for this over the Civic. I am a huge Civic fan. So this is like definitely a nicer laid out, a little bit roomier Civic, right? I'm just so shocked at how comfortable these seats are. Now this one does have a sunroof as well as a auto dimming rear view mirror. So it's got the creature comforts. It's got all the things. Let's see if I fit in the back seat. Okay, we have two options in the back. We have um, this passenger that's fully relaxed, which means I'm not gonna be fully relaxed. <laughs> I can't even get my left leg in here. So not, not a sleigh, definitely not a sleigh, but let's, Oh my God, okay, this is ridiculous. I'm gonna readjust the camera and I'll be right back. Okay, now <laughs> this is better, but I don't think I'd be able to fit in the driver's seat if I were to sit here. But I mean, I literally have enough room where my knees are not touching. So that at least is a plus, but um, I don't know. I do like these, these lights here in the back. They're very directed at my legs. Um, and they're very like in your face. So that's pretty cool. Um, but the back seats are very comfortable regardless of um, this, this bit. So thank you guys so much for watching today's video. Please don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, hit that bell icon so that you get notified whenever I drop a new video. Thank you to Johnson Honda of Stewart for sponsoring today's video and I will see y'all next time. Bye bye I'm gonna try to see if I can fit in the front now. Hey Sparks, thanks for watching today's video. Do you want more Sparkplug TV content? Then you can choose one of these three options right over here. The middle button is to subscribe to my channel, so please do that. Right over here. These three. I can't see them in real life, but they're right here. <laughs>